Welcome to Cardiac Delusions. Let's see our code today. Normal ECG excludes myocardial infarction. Is it true or false? Let's see the story. A 43-year-old male patient presented to the ER by typical chest pain of 5 hours duration. He had 12 liters of ECG as shown here, it was normal. The decision of the doctor who saw this patient to discharge him means that the patient is having normal ECG and so there is nothing to worry about. The problem is that the patient after being discharged, he returned to the ER again as his pain was still going and it's getting more severe. Then another doctor decided to withdraw troponin sample which was mildly elevated. So based on this information of the typical chest pain and the ECG and then the elevated troponin, they informed the consultant who decided to perform coronary angiography plus minus revascularization and it showed that there is thrombus containing lesion in the left circumflex causing this chest pain and so stenting was performed for this culprit vessel. So the diagnosis was non STEMI but it was presenting with normal ECG. How come this patient is having myocardial infarction and is still having normal ECG? And what was the mistake that the first doctor did? Let's explain what's happened here. Of course, we know the fourth universal definition of MI in 2018, which defined myocardial injury as evidence of elevated troponin with at least one value above 99th percentile, and this injury is considered to be acute if there is a detectable rise and or fall of troponin values. Then the acute myocardial infarction is defined if the acute myocardial injury is associated with at least one of the following, either symptoms of ischemia, new ischemic ECG changes, development of pathological Q waves, imaging evidence of new loss of viable myocardium or new segmental motion abnormalities, or identification of a coronary thrombus by angiography or autopsy. Myocardial infarction was previously classified into transmural versus subendocardial MI, but this is of course a pathological rather than a clinical classification, and then classified into Q wave versus non Q wave MI. But of course, the problem with this classification is that pathological Q waves can occur in both types of MI, so their presence was not peculiar to a specific type. That's why these two types of classification were omitted. Sometimes when a patient with non STEMI develop extensive subendocardial infarction, he has reduced voltage of action potential, which can be reflected as reduced R wave amplitude and then development of pathological Q waves due to the extensive necrosis. So in this case, the patient doesn't have a T elevation because there is no transmural infarction, it is just subendocardial. But because it is extensive, it resulted in pathological Q wave without T elevation. That's why myocardial infarction is classified into STEMI versus non-STEMI based on the presence or absence of ST elevation per se, and this of course affects the management and that's why there is separate guidelines for STEMI itself. So remember that the fundamental feature in the diagnosis of MI is the rise of cardiac biomarkers before the ACG event is changed. Of course, this is an exception here in case of STEMI, because in STEMI we depend only on the presence of ST elevation in the ACG as a mean role to schedule him urgently to primary PCI without awaiting cardiac biomarkers. But what if the patient doesn't have any ST elevation? So the question now that forces itself upon our minds, does normal ECG exclude myocardial infarction? We know of course that STEMI is a frank ECG diagnosis based on the ST elevation itself. But the most accurate question is, can non-STEMI show normal ECG? That's the question that we need to answer now. Let's see this diagram of the coronary anatomy. We can see here that the left main bifurcates into LED and LCX. LED gives origin to diagonals and septa perforators, and the LCX gives origin to OM branches. Then RCA gives origin to coronal branch, RV branch, and then industry bifurcates into posterolateral and PDA if it is a dominant vessel. Sometimes a patient may develop acute occlusion in one of the small arteries like OM branches, distal LCX, diagonals, distal posterolateral or PDA. In this case, the patient may present with typical chest pain with elevated cardiac biomarkers, but his ECG may be apparently normal because we are not speaking on a large magnitude of infarction that would be reflected 
on the ECG. So in this case, the non-STEMI may present with silent ECG but with marked elevation of cardiac biomarkers, which is a key feature to diagnose MI. In this case, it would be non-STEMI, of course, because the patient doesn't have any C elevation, and this patient will benefit from coronary revascularization. So this drives us to the fact that 15 to 20 percent of MI present with normal ECG even in presence of refractory angina and rise of cardiac biomarkers. That's why the first key feature in diagnosis of MI according to the fourth universal definition is the elevated cardiac biomarkers. So this code is a delusion of course normal ECG does not exclude myocardial infarction. If a patient is presenting with chest pain, you should respect his symptom, analyze his pain accurately. If it is typical chest pain or query to be anginal pain, check his cardiac markers even we may need to check them twice if you are in doubt because the normal ECG is not an exclusion for myocardial infarction. Thank you very much for your watching and wait next week for the next cardiac delusion.